Let's get personal. Okay. How personal we getting? We getting very personal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because I want to teach you about something that you taught me years ago. Okay. That I love about you today. Okay. You know what I loved about you personally? That I think most people slept on. You have a bluesy soul. You're an expressionist and a lover. And I noticed that way back in the day. It's very thoughtful. <laughs> I was the person that always sat back by and just looked. You know that. I looked at everything. <laughs> and to describe you, mm -hmm. I always had the same opinion of you. Funny, beautiful, mindful, mysterious, trustworthy. The five things I've always defined you as. And the reason why is because I am a learner of music. Mm -hmm. So I see and feel music in ways that other people can't. And you always reminded me of a blues singer. One of my favorite blues singers back in the day was Bessie Smith. Mm. Okay. And Bessie Smith had the articulation of heart in rhythm. Mm -hmm. While some people scattered, mm -hmm. and some people talked about the harsh realities like strange fruit. Right. Bessie Smith was able to deliver love and mindfulness in her music. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always appreciated about you. Thank you. Just the truth. Your melanin also struck me too because I was taught about a great queen in Egypt. Hatshepsut, maybe? Uh -huh. She was a yeah. pharaoh though. Yeah. She was one of the first female pharaohs. Mm -hmm. And what she did was put Egypt war ready and economically sound. To me, that's the definition of a woman. Able to provide and protect and give you structure on a high emotional level. Right. Why is that hated in this world today? Because people aren't real. So let, let's I just get into feel, that. Mm -hmm. No, no, wait. Let's get into that okay. because I don't want to cut off your opinion. Uh -huh. Let's grow from that. Okay. I had conversations with homosexual men, mm -hmm. and one man. I didn't know that homosexual community beefs as much as it did. About what? Women. And I heard a man say that the new gay man. Mm -hmm is a perversion of what a gay man is. And he told me, when these young boys today switch, pop their lips, dress a certain way, mm -hmm. they're perverting what a female is. Because a gay man does not hate a female. No, they just want to emulate, imitate. But what people are turning themselves into is a perversion of what a woman is. So women are defined on so many different levels that real and reality are two different things. How do you define the real versus the reality of what something is? Well, I'm gonna go back to to to, to your point about um, homosexuality. Um, it, I have a ton of. Um, gay friends, gay family members, lesbian family members. Um, and even even my, you know, my best friend will be out. And I'll say, you know, you know, that person is, is, you know, just like you said, they, they may move or emulate us. But me as a woman, if they take anything from us, or if they want to imitate anything like us, is the fact that we don't switch that heart when we're walking down the street. We don't, it's, it's a natural, women are just natural creatures. Like we, we just, when we in a room, 
when I'm in a room, I just command the room. I don't have to walk in the room with the tightest outfit on. I don't have to walk in the room switching, flipping my hair. I don't have to do any of that. But you have to learn how to command your room when you walk into it. And you have to learn how to command respect. If you are disrespecting yourself, then how do you expect anybody to respect who you are? Let me let me let me jump in on that. Because my opinion, mm -hmm. which is just mine, is that I'm gonna go back to J. Edgar Hoover. Okay. J. Edgar Hoover said the most dangerous thing that can happen to America is the unification of the Negro race. So, to destroy the Negro race, they had to find ways to put men and women against each other. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying homosexuality was put into the community to make people go at each other, because guess what? There's been homosexuals in antiquity. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not blaming them for anything. Mm -hmm. But, what has been defined negatively is who the man and woman of color is in our country. So if you've seen the breakdown systematically, let's go from the 80s. Mm -hmm. From the 80s, the women we look up to and respect it have changed. And then with the you can do what you want era coming in, people are not cognizant of who that woman was. They only know about what's being pumped mainstream as a look now. Yeah, so society. So as you know, who my biggest crushes was back in the day. Let me tell you, I used to like Felicia Rashad. Yeah, I was, was that, the, what? Yeah, that was every. That was everybody in our era' biggest crush. Uh, not really. Come on, though. In <laughs> in our era, yeah. It was. It was for many people. Who was who was that biggest crush? Little Kim. No, I mean, no. Our era in the eighties. I'm saying. I'm not gonna get to the nineties yet. In the eighties, well. Claire Huxtable was number one. We Felicia. also had um, the Felicia Rashad. Mm -hmm. We also had ah um, oh, damn it, Sade. Sade, the, yeah. the, the, the classy lady. Anita look. Baker. We, yes, the classy lady look was right. the look that brought people in. Even even in the hood, everybody had their little pins on their little jean jackets yeah. and their hair. Still but that. still, Salt and Pepper still was you know what I'm saying Moni Love, mm -hmm. hip hop wise. I don't care if you like MC Light, whatever, right? Then the '90s came in. And the look of sophistication changed to sexy. Mm -hmm. Lil' Kim, Foxy Brown. Jada Pinkett wasn't that, but in the movie she was turning that way. You right. know what I'm saying? The classy lady kind of fell back. Right. In the early 2000s is when the video vixen came mm -hmm. big. And now in 2019, the Instagram model. Right. Is the standard of beauty. I'm putting my fingers up, people. It's the standard of beauty. Right. So, and as a woman's mm -hmm. defining moment of finding her style and her look, mm -hmm. I see women come from the classy, dignified, I could still be ratchet or whatever, but I have a certain respect of myself. Right. To the point where it's now, I can let it all hang out, and I don't give a damn. My house dirty. I wear a certain pair of drawers and hit a perch and a curve. I'm the shit. <laughs> and that defining opinion of womanhood has killed us as a people. So once again, the, the defining of a race with the characteristics of this woman. Where the hell do you see us going? And how do we save our girls? from the mainstream more. I try to talk to girls, um, especially our young girls, uh, because a lot of them are um, coming from single family homes, single parent households. Um, uh, because it, the the Instagram model is 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 what gets the most likes and how many uh, followers you have. Kissy lips and all that. Yeah. It's 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 crazy. Yeah. When I tell you it's like nuts, it's crazy. And so I try. That's that's another thing why I 
you know move into fashion and not just not just um designing but also styling i think styling is like a huge point and i've i've spoke at um different schools on styling because a lot of these girls out here think that you because because instagram has has been so saturated with louis gucci uh fendi Fashion you know, fa fa Fashion Nova is very affordable. I know, that's but, cheap, man. Yeah, <laughs> but because that. because this this society has been saturated with all of these um, name brand labels, these young people are out here thinking that they have to like break the bank to look like them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you something. My grandmother has so much swag back in the day. My grandmother taught me how to walk. In hills my grandmother always had had me in pearls like she was the I'm trying to think who she was she was she was like the 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 model that I always wanted to look like she, my grandmother was the model that I always wanted to look like I, I can show you pictures of her where and she wore wigs i love wigs but she always carried herself in such a way that she commanded the room shout out to grandma shout out to grandma and i remember she would never leave the never leave the house without her chanel number no. five mm -hmm. perfume that's but that's probably the only thing that she spent the most money on but see yeah that's what i'm talking about like women back in the day from what even while I, I remember even the crackheads back in the day had a little more something to them than today. I'm not saying I'm so, no saluting the crackheads, right. what I'm saying. <laughs> back in the day, I worked with kids. Right. So back in the day, I could remember when somebody was on crack and the kids was in the street that a crackhead would clean themselves up for them kids and get right. out somewhere else. Exactly. And today the people get Because they have respect. Kids. Yeah. Exactly. It was about respect and back even, in the day. And even shout out to your grandma again because there was a time when people wouldn't leave their house without looking right. Right. Now people come out looking like anything. Let me tell you something. I when I was in elementary school, my grandmother made me put on a slip under that uniform. Yeah, hey. And check to make sure that the slip was on. Now when I got to school, it was a different story. <laughs> but it we don't have we don't have those grandmothers anymore. We don't have that we don't have that 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 nurturer anymore. We don't have that spirit anymore because the grandmothers now they 28 30 yeah. 35 yeah they know absolutely nothing about the context of old school the the context of old morality. school morality yeah and and this is what I do I try to go into to these schools and and sit in on these um discussions with these young people and show them that like I love vintage clothing and show them that you can you can pick up a piece here and you can pick up a piece there and still look like a million bucks. A lot of people always at often ask me and, and one thing about me is that I'm never I never want to look like anybody else. If if you know anything about me, you know my style is different from everybody. I don't I don't go with the norm. I I I'm always different. I'm always different you know I'm never I'm never I'm never looking the same way you know and, and my style changes but when young people start to realize that they can create their own lane and they don't have to go in the lane that everybody else is going in and that the video vixen is going in and the Instagram model is going in you create your own lane and you utilize that lane and people will follow you in that lane Look, look at me. They, when I, I'll get something from the thrift store, I'll piece it together, and people will be in my DMs like, oh my God, or where'd you get that? How'd you find that? Where'd you purchase that? The thrift store. It's a one of a kind piece. And you touched it up, so it's yours. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> you, it's all in how you put it together, how you piece it together. 